Hi, Nancy Burr Priest here. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator, and I'm glad you're here watching with me today. This is what we call a back fold card. So it will stand up, and it has this fun little circle, and it kind of keeps it closed. Um, so I'm going to show you. It's very easy. I think I saw it first from Patty Bennett. <clears throat> And then Susan Canfield, and now lots of people are doing it, including me. So, set that to the side. I'm going to get out a piece of Knight of Navy, and it is five and a half by seven and a half. I'm going to open my paper trimmer, move to that to the side, and I'll kind of move it as I do it. I'm going to store score it at three and a quarter. Let me make sure that's three and a quarter and six and a half. Okay, so I've got three and a quarter and six and a half. Now I am using the Very Christmas Suite, which because it's just really fun. And I took some of the paper and I'm using the paper from this suite. And this is um, a piece of three by five and a quarter. And I made it right next door, which is three quarter by five and a quarter. So how am I going to do this? Well, let's, let's show you first. This is going to be the back fold. So this part right here is going to fold back. And I just had my bone folder. So that's the back fold. This is gonna fold to the front. So it opens like this. And you see it kind of sits up, but it's so nice because it'll stand. I like that part. <clears throat> so on the front, I just thought this was cute with the, the footprints um, of the beautiful uh, bear there <clears throat> and um, of course, you could use either side of the designer series paper. That's what's so beautiful about this paper. So three by five and a quarter. I chose another piece because I kind of had the present there. So I decided I wanted to dress up the inside of the card. So I'm going to do another piece of designer series paper, which is three by five and a quarter. And I'm putting that there. Here's a three by five and a quarter white. And all, I don't know how I got red on there again. Oh, well, um, <clears throat> I am going to leave it because I might come through and just, you know how I did on another video. I just take a sponge dauber and add some stuff. Or I could turn it over and restamp it. In fact, I will do that because you know how I am. I don't like those little extra stuff. Um, and remember, it's paper, so you can turn it over and re-stamp it. This is with the real red. Oh, I like that better. Okay, so that is done. I'm going to take this three by five and a quarter piece. And I'm going to put it right here, trying to line it up so it's in between the score lines, kind of lines up with this one. And <clears throat> the last thing I'm going to do is add this. I want to make sure, yeah, that'll fit because that that is kind of, well, unless I have it wrong. Great question. I think it's this way. I had it up, you know, then I turned it. You know how that goes. And I'm adding this here, this little three quarter. So, so far, very easy piece. Now I'm gonna come in with my two and three eighths inch punch. So for some of the people that are coming to my class, I cut these right out, I punched them right out of the designer series paper that come with this suite. Um, but I didn't have, there's going to be a couple that are like this. And I want to show you what I did. 
I actually just took a piece of white paper, stamped it in navy, and stamped a little scarf on him. He looks great. Um, oh, I forgot to show you because on the inside, I have warm wishes there. So I'm going to add a little bit right into the, right on the presents. It's just a, a fun, boy, is that an easy fold, huh? Okay, I'm going to pop up the bear. He just looks fun popped up. Put a couple of them on there. Maybe I'll put three. Really want to hold him on there. And the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get some of this ribbon, which is really fun. It is gold and silver trim combo pack and I just have it right on the spool. I make two bunny ears. Then I twist them through, twist them around each other and put the one loop through and make my bow. That's how I do it. A lot of people do it lots of different ways. I like it this way because I can keep adjusting the bow and I wanted this bow relatively small. You don't need a whole lot of bow. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a glue dot and I'm going to find where the glue dots are. There they are. Um, Put the bow right on top of the glue dot to adhere it. Just add it up here. Just cute. Adds a little bit of something, but it's not a ton. Now, this is the next part that I thought was really a good idea. Take a little piece, so know which way it is frontward. That's the way you want it to land. Turn it over, and you're going to put just a little bit of tear and tape. Not a lot, just a little bit of tear and tape. And when you put tear and tape down, and they call it tear and tape because you can just tear it, it will stick. So once you put it down, it's really hard to readjust tear and tape. So let me put this down. Okay, I'm going to get a feel for where that goes. I don't want to cover up my present. So every time I do it, it might be just a little different depending on where the present is. And you've got a back fold. Basically, it folds backwards. It's just uh, so easy. And with that, it just kind of closes the card nicely. So it holds it closed. I just love this card. And thank you to Patty Bennett and Susan Canfield and all those that worked on it to make it really user-friendly. And I hope you try it. Before I let you go, here's my contact information. There's my email. Feel free to reach out to me. I live um, south of Rochester, New York. Here's my website. Um, if you don't have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, I'd love to be yours. Um, my November host code. Facebook business page, YouTube channel. Have a great day and thanks for watching.